Okay, we're going to do 11 through 14 all in one shot here. Um, these are all dealing with complex numbers. So, <clears throat> on 11, we have um, this expression, this complex number, minus this complex number. This is not multiplication. We have a subtraction here. So, 2 minus 3i, this negative you could think of it as a negative 1 being multiplied by each of these terms. So this becomes plus 1 plus 3i. Combining like terms, we get 3. On number 12, we have these expressions being multiplied together. So let's first do the exponent here. If we square this entire quantity, we get 16i squared. And here, anytime you have an i squared, we can simplify that because we know i squared equals negative 1. So i squared equals negative 1. So this becomes negative 16. 2 times i times i is negative 2 i squared. Again, here we have an i squared. So negative 2 times negative 1, that becomes positive 2. Positive 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. All right, on number 13, the goal here is to simplify, which means to not have any complex numbers with imaginary parts in the denominator. In order to do that, we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of this is 5 plus i. The only thing that changes is the sign of the imaginary part. Denominator also needs to be multiplied by 5 plus i. Here we're multiplying, so let's use the distributive property 15 plus 3i plus 5i plus i squared divided by the whole point on the denominator here is to get rid of the imaginary part. So let's see if we can successfully do that. So we have 25 plus 5i minus 5i minus i squared. So in the numerator, if we combine like terms, let's first make sure we realize here that this is equal to negative 1. So 15 minus 1 is 14. These combine to 8i. In our denominator, we have an i squared, so this is negative 1. So we have 25 minus negative 1. That's 25 plus 1, which is 26. And we successfully canceled out the imaginary part. Always make sure you reduce, if you can, all of these are divisible by 2. So if we divide by 2, we get 7 plus 4i over 13. <clears throat> All right, lastly, number 14, the value of i to the 43rd. So the way I prefer to do this is to start with the fact that we know i squared equals negative 1. If i squared equals negative 1, that means if we multiply i squared times i squared, negative 1 times negative 1, we get positive 1. So we've just shown that i to the 4th equals positive 1. If you start with this, it makes the problem very easy to do because 1 is a very nice number to work with. So we're going to see if we can split 43 into, multi into how many times 4 goes into it. So i to the 4th, 4 goes into 43 evenly 10 times, but there's a remainder. So that's i to the 40th, there's 3 i's left because we're trying to get to 43. So I'm going to say times i cubed i to the 4th is just equal to 1. So if you have 1 to the 10th, that's just simply 1. And then i cubed is equal to i squared times i. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times i is negative i. <clears throat>